Our God is a God of happy endings. I think it's important that we know that and that we realize that and that we trust it and that we believe it and that we experience it in our life, that our God is a God of happy endings. So we know that no matter what we go through and no matter what suffering we experience, no matter what difficulty we experience, our God is a God of happy endings. And so I want to use that frame as we focus on the first reading here, on this reading in the book of Genesis, the sacrifice of Isaac with Abraham. Now hopefully when we hear this reading, we are shocked by it and we're troubled by it and we can't comprehend how God would ever ask a father to sacrifice his only son. But remember, our God is a God of happy endings. Abraham knew this. He knew and believed and trusted in God. And so for this homily, what I'm going to do is actually just kind of focus on the first reading and go through it line by line almost and help us to see how God is faithful and that he is a God of happy endings and how Abraham knows this and believes in it, so much so that he's willing to sacrifice his only son. So we begin with this first phrase, God put Abraham to the test. Isn't it interesting that our God would put us to the test and why would he put us to the test? Well, the answer is our God is a God of happy endings, that when he puts us to the test, he knows that there's going to be something good that comes out of it. And so throughout our lives, he will put each and every one of you to a test to see how faithful you are, to see if you truly believe that God can be trusted. And so he calls out to Abraham, and he calls him by name. He says, Abraham. We know how important it is that when God calls us by name, he's asking something great of us. And Abraham says, here I am. And that simple phrase, here I am, is a phrase that says, I come to do your will. And so we know from the the, the psalm, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. So God calls Abraham, and immediately Abraham says, here I am. I come to do your will. And so God explains to him what he wants him to do, what this test will be, and he says, take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love. In other translations in the Greek, the phrase your only one is actually translated as your beloved son. Does that sound familiar? We heard that in the gospel today. I am, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So Isaac is the beloved son. And he's actually a, a, prof, a pro, prophecy or a, an a image of what Christ will be when he comes. So he, takes your, he says, take your only one, take your beloved son whom you love and go to the land of Moriah, which is a, just a huge uh, mountain. Then he says, then you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. So notice, he tells him to go there, but he doesn't say anything more that I'll point it out to you when you get there. So Abraham takes his son Isaac and just begins walking in faith. They don't even know where they're going, just knowing that when they get there, the Lord's going to point it out to them. Kind of sounds like St. Joseph when the angel came to him and said, go to Bethlehem. Go to Egypt. He didn't say much more than to go, and I will point it out to you. So when they finally get there after this journey, and it's believed that Isaac was not a young child, but he was anywhere between the age of like um, mid-20s to mid-30s. So it could have even been the age of Christ. So Isaac went along willingly, faithfully, not knowing. And so God tells him to stop there, at this place and to build an altar. And so Abraham unquestioningly builds an altar and arranges the wood on the altar. Now, anytime we hear wood in scripture, what is that wood referring to? The wood of the cross. Every time we hear wood in scripture, it's a reference 
to the wood of the cross. So he tells him to arrange this altar, to place wood on it. Then he lays Isaac on the altar, and he reaches out and takes a knife, and he's ready to slaughter his son. And as he's about to slaughter his son, the Lord's messenger calls out from heaven and says, Abraham, Abraham, he calls him by name. And Abraham says, here am I, Lord. I come to do your will. And the Lord says, do not lay your hand on the boy. Do not do the least thing to him. So Abraham stops what he's doing. He does God's will at the moment. He doesn't harm his son. And then the voice says, I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your only beloved son. God sees Abraham's faithfulness, that he's willing to even sacrifice his only son. And God spares him of this because God knows that one day he will sacrifice his own son Jesus for all of us. And so Abraham looks around and he spies a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. I want you to notice two things there. A ram is a type of goat or, or sheep that they would use. Jesus is the Lamb of God. It's caught in a thicket. What is a thicket made of? Thorns. And what were the thorns used for in Jesus? The crown of thorns. So he went and took the ram offered it up as a holocaust and place for his son. And the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did and not withholding your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly. God is the God of happy endings. Now there's going to be things in your life that he's going to ask you to sacrifice and maybe even perhaps this Lent, we've made some sacrifice in our life in terms of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Maybe there's someone that we're too attached to or something that we're too attached to or some place that we're too attached to. God may be asking us to sacrifice and to give that up. But remember, God is a God of happy endings. And so if you give that up, if you give up whatever it is that you may be too attached to, you're going to experience a happy ending. And so Abraham, who was promised his son Isaac, and the Lord promised that Isaac would be this this leader of great nations, that he would produce more children than you could ever imagine. He was willing to sacrifice his son Isaac and say, Lord, I don't know how you're going to fulfill this, but I do believe you are a God of happy endings. The other thing about Abraham is it's written in in the, the, uh, the book of Galatians, He believed that even if he slaughtered his son, that God could bring him back to life. So that's why he was willing to do it. He knew that God was a God of happy endings, and if he was going to slaughter his son, somehow or another, God would bring him back to life. And so we hear that God spares him of this and sees how faithful he is, and then he kind of declares that Your son's descendants will be as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands and the seashore, and your descendants shall take place of the gates of their enemies and fill all the nations of the earth. Find blessing. All this because you obeyed me. So can we see that God is a God of happy endings? He takes this situation that seems like it's going to end very horribly, and he makes it into something wonderful. We hear in the the gospel today, in the the transfiguration, Jesus is giving us an image of his glorified body. He's showing us what the resurrection will be like even before he suffers and dies and rises. Now, for each and every one of us, God wants to know our faithfulness. And so for all of us, life will test us. Or rather, we will be tested in life and our faithfulness. And that may come in your marriage. That may come with your children or grandchildren. That may come with friends. That may come with your work. That may come with just living life in general. It might come through cancer. It might come through illness or depression or anxiety or whatever it may be. 
we're all going to experience some kind of test that we think is beyond our capability. But if we're faithful, if we cling to God through it, we will discover a happy ending. And so as we continue on this season of Lent, let your prayer, your fasting, and your almsgiving allow you to take these steps towards God, allow you to surrender towards God, allow you to let go of anything that would keep you from loving him, allow him to test you, so that in the end, we will all discover this God of happy endings.